Millions of jobs have allowed people to stay at home while working, but companies have been fighting to pull their workers back into the office. Two years ago, on average, people had to come into the office one day a week, and now it's at three and a half days a week. In fact, remote work jobs have decreased by 25% in the past three years. And only 11% of all jobs in the United States are being done remotely. That number was over 60% during the pandemic. So what changed aside from the pandemic ending? What changed? Companies have to have leases on buildings. They have to pay the utility bill. They have to pay the cost to bring everyone into the office to have the right equipment for the people to work on. So it cannot be done from a financial perspective. You can't look at it from a financial perspective and say we're saving money by bringing people in because you're not. So then what's the benefit of coming in? The benefit is the culture, right? The teamwork, right? Something magical occurs when we can see all the faces around the meeting room table. Some, supposedly something happens. But could the real issue be that there's a lack of trust or there's this sense of I need to micromanage every single thing because if I'm not over Brad's shoulder, then Brad might be doing the wrong thing. Is that the real issue? I think we can all agree that when it comes to office work, administrative type work, you know what I'm talking about, writing agreements, looking at emails, reviewing spreadsheets, all that stuff, that can be done at home. It doesn't need to be in a cubicle farm. In a survey recently, 65% of people said they were willing to take a lower salary if it meant they could work a remote work job. This comes down to where are you in life? Are you in your mid twenties? Are you in your thirties? Maybe you're 40 plus and you've realized that you can't make more time. It doesn't matter what you do in life. You only have so much time left and it's valuable. So maybe you are willing to take a 10 to 15% cut in your salary. Can you do that? Would it be worth having extra hours in the week? Because for a lot of people it is, but for other people, they're like, forget about that. I'll, I'll have that time later and I'll just double down and work as hard as I can now and come to the office every single day. I'll tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people that are willing to take a small decrease, a small cut in their salary if it means a 100% remote work job. And if you look in the government on any given day, any day that you wake up and you open up your computer, there's between 300 and 600 100% remote work government jobs that you can apply to. And regardless of how you feel on the topic of remote work, whether you love it or you hate it, it is here to stay. It is not going anywhere. This is gonna be part of worker culture moving into the future. Many experts believe that over 32 million Americans will be working remotely by 2025. But of course, there are millions of jobs and there are industries where remote work is just not feasible. You just can't do it. If you're a dentist drilling on root canals, you can't do that remotely. If you're a mechanic turning a wrench, you know, you have to be in the auto body shop. You gotta be there. If you're a person looking right now and you're saying, hey, I want another job, but I wanna be able to do it at home or I wanna do it while I'm traveling. If you're looking for a remote work, telework job, you have to focus on specific industries. Where are these opportunities at? Where is there a greater probability that you can do telework or remote work? Well, here are the top industries. First, we have nonprofits where there's 19% of people that can work remotely. Healthcare has 23%. IT has 25%, education has 46%, and then the professional services, where 49% are able to work remotely. Of course, the salaries in these positions, they're gonna vary all over the place. It might be $40,000 a year in one company. It could be $90,000 a year in another company, depending on your skills and your abilities and where you're trying to get that job at. On average, many studies show that remote workers make about $74,000 a year, but that's the average. If you look at the federal government, you will find there are some remote positions that are GS-15. That's the top of the pay scale. So that person could easily earn over $180,000 a year. Like this one here. This is for a program manager at the Department of Homeland Security. I'm not saying that this is super common. You're going to have to look for these type of positions. On average in the government, most remote work positions are between GS-11 and GS-13. Of course, it's not all sunshine and flowers. There's been some horror stories for remote workers. Uh, oftentimes with their companies, they're finding that they're using different technology in order to monitor them. Some of this could be considered an invasion of privacy. 
So for instance, there's facial recognition technology. So it's scanning my face. There's a software. There's a technology that scans your face to see how many times are you blinking? Are you actually looking at the computer? Now this screams to me of insecurity. Why are you hiring a person that you cannot trust? Same thing with the key loggers. They, they keep track of how many times you're, you're actually, you're hitting the key on the keyboard. And this ties into some sort of color status that's green, yellow, and red. Red means you're not at work and green means you're being productive. So what does that mean when you have to use the bathroom? Or maybe you have to run and go answer the door for some reason. How long can you be gone from your computer? Maybe some anxiety starts to build up. So that's one thing. Then you have issues where you have the worker balancing two remote work jobs. So they go ahead and accept two job offers and they might even be in a meeting with the mic muted, right? So they're in the meeting live on two computers. They turn off the camera and they turn off their mic and they're pretending like they're listening, but they're not. And they're collecting two separate paychecks. We've seen that happen. In fact, I think there was one story where a person was working three remote jobs. So some people are gonna say that's a moral issue. It could even be in the contract that you signed that you absolutely cannot do this. In my experience, I've been remote work over three years. And to me, you can't put a price on it because you're actually getting your time back. And the time that you spend when you wake up and you get dressed and you're rushing out the house and you're waiting in your commute, and then you finally make it to the office and you're getting pulled into these random unproductive meetings, all that time comes back to you. And it's easily an hour or two extra every day that you can now allocate to certain other areas that might, might yield a more positive return in your life. So despite how much CEOs and senior leadership, they don't like it. They would prefer it never existed in the first place. I really don't see it going away. There's a small dip right now, sure, because the pandemic is over and there's this huge effort to bring people in, but I think it's going to be very temporary. And if we look out two, three, four, five years plus from now, we will witness a resurgence in remote work. If you are interested in a federal government job, whether it's remote in the office or a hybrid position, you need to understand the process, the federal hiring process, the different steps, you submit your application, you're waiting on the referral, you're waiting to hear back from the interview, all of it can be quite overwhelming, it can be quite confusing. If you want to know the exact process for this, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.